Hiya, 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 hiya. Uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, apparent weight and problems that deal with apparent weight. I came up with uh, six examples, four on the first page, two on the next page that are different situations where you might be asked to calculate uh, the apparent weight. So the first thing we have to do is you really have to define what apparent weight means to you. Okay, And it's not complicated. Whenever someone asks you to find the apparent weight in any kind of problem, just remember that the apparent weight is basically the normal force. That's the force of the scale. Imagine you're standing on a scale in each one of these situations and it's the force that the scale is producing on the body. Okay, so let's take the easiest situation here. Um, just the person standing on the ground. Okay, if you do a free body diagram on that person, well, again, there's a normal force here. And what else? Um, there's also gonna be a, a weight, right? In this case, it's a mass of the, uh, the guy times little g, okay? So again, if this guy is not accelerating, that's a very simple problem to solve. You get the normal minus the weight has to be equal to zero, right? I've added, I've added all the forces, and there's no acceleration in this case, so we get the simple answer that the normal, or the apparent weight, in this case, it's not really apparent, it does equal to the weight. That's case number one. Okay, what about case number two? Well, what if you're standing at the bottom of a pool, and again, you're standing on a scale and you were asked to calculate the apparent weight? Well, again, when you're at the bottom of the pool, um, you still have the, the weight, uh, which has a magnitude of mass times little g. Uh, what else? We're gonna have a normal force. That's the scale pushing up on the guy, call that n. And there's also another force now. Because I'm displacing fluid, um, there's also a buoyancy force. I'll just call that B. Okay, and the buoyancy force um, is uh, in the same direction as the normal force. Okay, again, if there's no acceleration for this object, if I'm just standing here at the bottom of the pool, all of these forces have to sum to zero. Okay, so we simply have that the normal minus, or sorry, plus the buoyancy force has to be equal to mass times little g. Okay, now if you simplify this a little bit, just bring the buoyancy force on the other side, what do we get? Uh, that the normal force is equal to mg uh, minus uh, the buoyancy force. So here's our expression for the apparent weight when an object is at the bottom of the pool. Notice that uh, the normal force, in this case, the apparent weight is smaller uh, than case number one. Okay, let's take the next case now. Again, we do a free body diagram. This is someone standing in an elevator on a scale and the elevator is accelerating upward. Okay, we're gonna do our free body diagram here. Um, that guy still has the same weight whether he's standing on the ground, whether he's underwater, or whether he's accelerating up, that doesn't change how much mass he has. Uh, the next thing we have is, um, there's a normal force, he's standing on a scale, so that's gonna have a reading. And that's it, those are the only two forces acting on him. Now you may be tempted to put this force here, this tension force in the cable, uh, however that tension force is not acting on the object. Okay, it's not acting on the person here. That's actually acting on the elevator case. And right now for the free body diagram, we're only considering this guy and all the forces acting on him. I've also told you in this case that he's accelerating up. Okay, so Newton's second law says you add up all the forces and those are equal to mass times acceleration. Uh, whenever you have an acceleration, I find it's always best to choose the direction of the acceleration as the positive direction. So if we do that, what are we gonna get? Um, switch the colors here. We get that the normal force, which is acting up, minus mg, which is acting down, has to be equal to mass times acceleration. 
Okay, again, just as I did before, I'll isolate. So I get that the normal force is equal to mass times acceleration plus mass times little g. Okay. You can see in this case again, if I just isolate or take out the mass, I get a plus little g uh, in the parentheses here. So when I'm accelerating upward, notice that the normal force or the apparent weight of the object is going to be greater than case a when I'm just standing still. And the faster I accelerate, the bigger this term is, the larger the apparent weight of the object. Okay? Alright, let's try the last case now. Uh, the last case is the same situation as number three, except this case I'm accelerating downward. So the free body diagram actually looks the same thing. The only difference is I'm accelerating downward. So in this case, it's best to choose a I'll choose the positive direction as uh, being toward the direction of the acceleration. So when I write down the uh, Newton's second law of motion, uh, what I get is uh, mg minus the normal uh, equals to positive ma. Okay. Now again, if I isolate for the normal force, what do I get in this case? I get that the normal force equals to mass and little g minus uh, the acceleration. Okay. So notice if I don't have any acceleration, I get the same result as in case one. So if I'm moving at constant velocity, for example, I get that the apparent weight is simply equal to the weight. But if I'm accelerating downward, um, notice that my apparent weight is going to be smaller um, than the weight if I'm just standing on the ground. Okay, so I've got two more cases on the next uh, page. Okay, and here they are. Um, imagine here I'm in a um, standing on some kind of board and I'm going around a loop to loop like this and I want to find what is the apparent weight at the top and what is the apparent weight when I'm at the bottom. Okay. Uh, for this problem here, we're going to just assume that the velocity is constant uh, throughout the entire trajectory. Or the speed is constant, rather, but the velocity is constantly changing direction here as I'm going around this loop. Okay, so let's see what's going on at the top. At the top, uh, if you look at all the forces acting on the object, it still has a weight, which is mg. And now, the normal force, or the contact force, the force from the block acting on the guy ends up being in the same direction as the weight. And that value is n. Okay. Now you should know that when you're at the top, uh, the direction of the acceleration, again, if I'm going around in a circle here, when I'm at the top, the direction of the acceleration is toward the center of the circle. That's the centripetal acceleration of the object. Okay. So let's look at the bottom case now. Uh, the free body diagram for the bottom case, well, that just looks like a regular free body diagram that we're used to doing. You have the weight acting down, which is the same for every single case we've seen. And you have a contact force. Now this block is pushing up on this guy. Uh, that's the normal force, or this contact force between the block uh, and the person. And that's it. Those are the only two forces acting on the object. Now, the only difference from the top and the bottom is that when I'm at the bottom, I know that the acceleration is toward the center of the circle. Okay. And when I'm at the top, the acceleration is toward the center of the circle, but acting down. So all we need to do now is just apply Newton's second law to both of these problems uh, at the top. I'm going to have the normal plus mg uh, equals to mass times acceleration. Uh, since I'm going around at constant speed, that acceleration takes this very uh, specific value, this centripetal acceleration. So I can rewrite that centripetal acceleration as m v squared uh, divided by the radius of the circle. 
Okay, if I isolate for the normal force, which is what I'm trying to find here, that's the apparent weight, I'm going to get uh, mv squared over r. Uh, minus mg, and here's my expression for the apparent weight when I'm at the top. Okay. Let's compare that now to the case when I'm at the bottom. Okay, when I'm at the bottom, well, we apply Newton's second law. Again, the acceleration is toward the center of the circle, so I'm going to take that to be my positive direction. So if you apply Newton's second law, you get normal force, minus mg, minus because it's acting away from the center of the circle, and again that equals to mass times the centripetal acceleration, which is v squared over r. Okay, so the normal force here, when I'm at the bottom, if you isolate, you get mv squared over r plus mg. Okay. So first thing we notice is that in the case for the bottom, notice these two terms are always adding together. So I'm always going to get a bigger apparent weight when I'm going around in a circle at constant speed and I'm near the bottom. Okay? In that case, the normal force has to be bigger than the weight. Okay? The normal force must be bigger than the weight and it must be large enough uh, in order to remain on that circular path. Okay. If you compare that to the top, uh, in the top case it's a little bit different, right? In the top case, uh, we have this term which is bigger, okay. and we're taking away some of the weight here. So the apparent weight that you're going to get is going to be smaller, okay? because I ended up subtracting two terms, whereas in this case here I end up adding two terms. Okay, so those are six different problems, uh, five different problems. This one here has two parts um, that look at the apparent weight. So whenever they're asking you that in a problem, just remember the apparent weight is just another word for finding a normal force. So just imagine an object that is standing on a scale and you want to find uh, what is the value of that force acting on the person. Okay, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comment, uh, please email me or write them in the comments section. Bye-bye.